Permito ahora ofrecer la palabra a la distinguida representante permanente de Ghana. Thank you, Mr. President. I have the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of the 61 members of the Group of Friends of the African Women Leaders Network to the United Nations. The Group of Friends expresses appreciation to the Bolivian Presidency of the UN Security Council for convening this open debate on the important agenda of women, peace, and security. The group also thanks the Secretary General for his report on this item, which captures the challenges as well as opportunities presented to member states and stakeholders in the global effort to prevent conflict and sustain peace through an enhanced gender-sensitive lens. The briefings provided by the Executive Director of UN Women, Ms. Fumzile Mlambo Nguka, and Randa Signora Atala are also deeply appreciated. Mr. President, the African Women Leaders Network was launched in New York in June 2017 with a view to bolster women's leadership for transformative change in Africa. The vision of the network is inspired by the WPS agenda and seeks to increase women's access to decision-making processes and leadership positions in view of their exceptional contributions to sustaining peace and development in Africa. To date, the network counts over 300 women leaders operationalizing key strategic instruments for the implementation pertaining to the peace, security, and development agenda. In a bid to support this groundbreaking effort, a cross-regional group of friends of the AWLN was established last February under the leadership of the permanent missions of Ghana and Germany to serve as a strategic platform and provide political support for the network at the UN headquarters and beyond. We are committed to making the message of women's political and economic empowerment a central theme in the maintenance of international peace and security, conflict prevention and peace building. We wish to focus our intervention on three main areas. First, we support the renewed efforts in the past year to include practical actions for improved implementation of the WPS agenda and welcome in this regard the convening of the informal expert group meetings to explore gender dimensions of major conflict areas around the world, and particularly on Mali and the Sahel, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Lake Chad Basin, and the Central African Republic. The group comments in this regard the pioneering leadership of UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed, the Executive Director of UN Women, and the AU Special Envoy on Women, Peace, and Security, who took the practical step to embark on joint AU-UN fact-finding missions to the DRC and Nigeria in 2017, and subsequently to Chad, Niger, and South Sudan this year. The invaluable exchanges with women in communities in the course of these joint missions represent an innovation that will intensify efforts towards the implementation of the WPS agenda and significantly bring to the fore the voices of women and girls silenced by the consequences of conflict and war. We also commend the Swedish Foreign Minister, Mark Wallström, who joined the Chad and Niger legs of the mission. Second, the Group of Friends reiterates its full support to efforts by the Secretary General to increase women's participation in peacekeeping and UN peace operations, including political missions in Africa. Member states must support and complement these efforts to prevent a stagnation and possible decrease in the level of representation of women in these missions. The Group of Friends of the AWLN adopted a strategic plan of action last September to support women's leadership and participation in peace processes on the ground. The plan includes training and support for women as mediators and chief of operations in order to ensure a qualitative increase in the number of women in police and military contingents of UN peacekeeping missions. Third, 
We believe it is essential to develop closer partnerships in support of the women, peace, and security agenda at local, national, and regional levels. The Group of Friends firmly believes the AWLN provides an excellent framework for developing such viable relationships that will bolster the implementation of peace efforts, especially at the local level. The women belonging to the network have already demonstrated their ability and potential to create and to foster innovative mechanisms to boost efforts to achieve durable peace and development, and consequently must be fully supported to assume their rightful place as core drivers of the peace, security, development, governance, and economic architectures designed during and after conflicts. Mr. President, the African Women Leaders Network is working towards women's participation in decision-making processes at the local level through the establishment of national chapters. I am pleased to inform this August Council the national chapters in Central African Republic, Cote d'Ivoire, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo have been established with the support and collaboration of the African Union and UN Women. We recognize that women are already engaged and are ready to play their role to build and sustain peace. We need more of them at the decision-making table we need more women in prevention, mediation, and on negotiating teams. It is our responsibility to make this happen in the shortest possible time through our continued engagement and support. Ghana continues to take necessary measures to address structural barriers that impede women's political participation, economic empowerment, and role in decision making. Recent achievements in this regard including, include the appointment of women to key positions in cabinet, the military and law enforcement agencies, justice institutions, as well as peace building and conflict prevention institutions. We, also, we are also one of the 23 African countries that have developed national action plans for the implementation of Resolution 1325. Government is currently in the process of formulating our national action plan in collaboration with relevant stakeholders, and in so doing, is addressing challenges and gaps experienced in the first action plan, such as the lack of adequate funding, effective localization, monitoring, and evaluation. Within the framework of the ECOWAS Regional Action Plan, Ghana continues to contribute to sub-regional efforts in the WPS agenda. Very instrumental in these efforts is the Women, Peace, and Security Institute at the Kofi Annan International Training Center, which prior to elections in Liberia concluded election observation training for 25 female staff of the Liberia Peace Building Office, as well as capacity building for selected eminent women in conflict analysis, mediation, and negotiation. We share the view that low levels of political participation of women prior to conflict, coupled with poverty, food insecurity, disparity and deprivation remain critical factors that impede women's political participation and role in conflict prevention and post-conflict peace building. We must therefore address the various dimensions of women's empowerment, which include economic, social, psychological, and political empowerment. In conclusion, we wish to state that much has been achieved, but much more remains to be done. It is our hope that member states will continue to demonstrate their commitment to the WPS agenda in concrete terms, especially in conflict-prone regions of the world, including Africa, where significant challenges persist. I thank you for your attention. I agradezco la distinguida representante permanente de Ghana por su declaración.